Hello and welcome to the Canon Sports Podcast. I am your host, Ryan from Canon Sports, and joining us live in the studio, Artesia High School basketball coach, Jeff Miles. Jeff, thanks so much for stopping by the pod, man. What up, what up, what up? Thanks right. for having me. So uh, your full name is Jeffrey, and I just want to point out, when we, were, when we were communicating to set this up, I kept saying Jeffrey, and finally said, the only people who call me Jeffrey are my wife and my mom, so you can call me Correct. Jeff. So I'm right. going to call you Jeff today. Right. 100%. Only my wife and my, wa- my mom and my wife when I'm uh, in trouble or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, I'm going to call you Jeff. Then Jeff, thanks so much for coming by the show, man. How's it going? Uh, it's going great, man. Thanks for having us. We made the drive out from uh, Lakewood. I uh, brought my, my boy, Coach Daniel Agatep, over there to kind of carpool with me right along. So uh, thanks, for having, uh, thanks it, for having us. Let's yeah. do it. If you're listening from outside of the state of California, even on Veterans Day, you need somebody to get that carpool lane on the way from Lakewood to Pacoima. Yeah, it was about an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, we appreciate you coming by. So Coach Miles, the head coach of Artesia High School, how long have you been in this position, man? So technically, this is my third year uh, at the position. I've been to the school for four years. Uh, when I first got there, I was coaching the uh, boys fresh uh, boys JV team uh, with Coach Ray Walker, who's been there for about eight, nine years. Uh, he asked me, did I want to coach? And I came over and I coached the boys freshman team. Uh, I think it's JV or freshman, I don't remember. But then uh, the, that one year, he, was, he talked to me, said, hey, coach, I'm thinking about stepping down. My mom's getting a little bit older. Do you, would you, would you uh, want to take over? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to take over. It's Artesia. Of course not. Of course, I, of course I want to take over. So the principal said, hey, you know, that first year, let's kind of do a co-head coach deal. Um, so he so kind of teaches me the reins, kind of uh, let them know how to run a program. So my first year technically was co-head coach with Coach Ray Walker. So I counted as my first year. Uh, he, he let me kind of run everything. But uh, this is my second year pretty much by myself with my own staff. Uh, you know, last year was COVID year. But this is my this is my third year technically, but, you know, second year by myself. So. Second year by yourself, and you just mentioned it. So your first year was the COVID year. Right. I mean, COVID hit probably right towards the tail end of basketball season to start, right? right. I mean, what is, what is that like for you in your first year solo head coach, and all of a sudden we're dealing with something that, you know, none of us have ever dealt with before? So COVID was crazy because uh, we didn't even know if we were going to have a season or not. So I, 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 at, a, at the school we have a basketball class. So every day during the class, um, seventh and eighth period, I'm um, the teacher of the class, and the kids are asking, hey, are we having a season? Are we having a season? So I'm just meeting over the class, over Google Meet, uh, Zoom. They're trying to tell them, hey, work out. We're doing workouts via Zoom, like in December, January. And we finally got the okay from CIF that you guys are going to play games. Uh, we had maybe about four or five weeks to get ready before the, for the season. So we, were, we started outdoors uh, until we kind of got the okay to go indoors. And once we, go, once we went indoors, uh, we were testing every week. Uh, the, the, the protocols last year were you had to test 48 hours, I believe, before a contest. Last year, the season was so truncated uh, that we were playing, you know, four games in, in five days. So we were testing, you know, four times a week, five times a week. Uh, so it took a toll on the kids. But the kids were troopers. They, they pushed through. Uh, last year, within the, in the COVID season, we went 16-8, and eight, lost in the first round of the CIF playoffs to a good San Marino team. Uh, but we were young, uh, but we got through it. And this year, I told them that, hey, we got through last year. Last year was tough. So this year, just, 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 uh, let's get it. Yeah. Now, now you also alluded to it a little bit earlier in the way that you said Artesia. You know, when you were asked, do you want to take over? You said, yeah, it's Artesia. If you're listening and you're not aware, Artesia High School has a long and storied history with their basketball program. Among others, James Harden. Uh, we had Capono, uh, Farmer, Tolbert, the O'Bannon brothers. What is it like for you stepping into a program with that kind of a history? It's always pressure because, you know, you want to win. And, like, I tell our guys, too, like, everybody who plays us, it's their championship game. Like, they always want to beat Artesia because when, when, you, when you see Artesia, the younger kids think, you know, Harden's. So they want to they wanna beat Harden's team. And then the coaches think O'Bannon's. So they want to beat O'Bannon's team. So everybody we play, they, we got to match the intensity. If we don't match the intensity, we're going to get ran out of the gym. And it's hard to kind of get the guys to understand that, hey, every game and somebody wants to beat you, man. So you got to come ready to play. If you're not ready to play, it's going to be tough. So – as a coach, I just want to kind of step in and, uh, you know, kind of fill the role. Our teacher hasn't missed the playoffs in 21 years. Since 1981 was the last time they missed the playoffs. So it's kind of keeping that ball going, keeping the uh, ball rolling. It, it's tough, but it's pressure. But, I, I mean, with pressure, pressure makes diamonds. So, you know, I love diamonds, so pressure makes diamonds. I'm trying to be a diamond. Yeah, there you go. And, you know, and, and, and I can, te- you know, attest that what you're saying is absolutely true. I grew up in the Inland Empire. Uh, I went to Damien High School in Laverne. So I heard about Artesia, but we never played Artesia. My dad, on the other hand, went to Loyola High School, and then he was a coach. Uh, he was a basketball coach in the 80s at Sarah High School. So there were two teams that I always heard about from him. It was Modern Day and it was Artesia. Those were the two teams that he was always like, we got out of bed for the Modern Day game. We got out of bed for the Artesia. 
Artesia game. So uh, it must be an interesting position to be in where you know that for you, it's just a game. For your team, it's just a game. Every team that you're playing is getting out of bed in the morning. Yeah. We're playing Artesia today. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the, the thing, of the, uh, the path, well, the thing too is that kind of Artesia kind of, we've always been competitive. We always play hard. Uh, but we haven't had any of those, you know, great players like the Hardens and things like that. But we're starting to kind of finally get the mold back, starting to build back slowly but surely. We have two really good sophomores who I think might be that, that, that next level player. Um, so, but like you said, it's, it's everybody's championship game. So we got to be ready as a coach. I got to be ready. I got I to gotta treat every game like it's a championship game. So I got to scout no matter who we're playing. I watch film on teams. I tell my guys who watch film. So we take nobody lightly because we know they're not going to take us lightly. There you go. Now, coach, if we can backtrack a little and start from the start, where are you from? I am born and raised in South Central LA. Okay. And where'd you go to high school? I went to high school at Santa Monica High School, uh, Sam High as we know it, graduated in uh, 98. Um, famous alums there, probably Dean Kane, Superman, the first Superman. <laughs> Superman so, uh, as well as Rob Lowe and oh, the, uh, yeah. the brothers Estevez, oh, yeah. if I'm well, not mistaken. When I, when right? I was there, it was, it was <laughs> Dean Kane. That's all they told us. So, a uh, cool thing, too, about this year is that we're playing. We actually get to play Santa Monica this year on the schedule, and my old coach is there. So, that was always been a dream of mine is kind of play your old coach. So, uh, it's going to be a great game, hopefully. So we're playing them on uh, – December the 10th, Friday night at Santa Monica. So we're making a nice little drive from Lakewood to Santa Monica. There you go. Well, that'll be a fun game. Now, now, growing up as a player, when did you start playing basketball? Funny story. I started playing basketball in the fifth grade. I was on the sideline. I'll never forget. And a kid, uh, I don't know where he's at now, but a kid named Rodell Peoples. I was kind of taller for my age. And he said, hey, you want to play basketball? And I said, yeah, I have no idea how to play basketball. He said, I'll teach you. So I started playing in the fifth grade. Uh, just kind of picked it up a little bit. Uh Played in the eighth grade. When I went, when I went to high school, ninth grade, I played uh, freshman. Tenth grade, I played JV. It was pretty good in JV. Uh, played varsity, 11th and 12th grade year. Uh, varsity, as of when I was there, at 11th grade year, we had a kid come in who's now the coach at uh, Paramount High School. Always joke around. Kid was really good. He played uh, D1 at Arizona State. His name Steve Moore. He came and took my spot. So, I still give him kind of give him kind of grief for that for taking my spot, but he was really good though. Yeah, and I guess uh, now now as coaches, when you play Paramount, you can uh, maybe you uh, maybe get back uh, him a little uh, bit. I try, oh, I try to get him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And now as a player, what was your position? Uh, I was a wing, so kind of a forward defender. I was probably actually I was a really good defender. I was one uh, best defense on the team, so that was my goal. That's why what, what I preach myself is on my team is defense because that's what uh, when I played high school basketball. Uh, Coach would always put me the best, on the best player because he know that I would kind of get after him and dig in and guard full court. So I was mainly a defender. Okay. Now, after high school, Santa Monica High, Santa Monica high School, where do you then go to college? I ended up going to Fresno State. So I wanted to get away from the family but go too far, but not, not too far. I can still drive home. So I ended up going to Fresno State. Okay. And did you play any ball there? No, I didn't play ball, but I ended up taking a uh, coach's class there. So that's kind of how I got into coaching. I took a class with the uh, – Late great Jerry Tarkanium, his assistant coach was uh, the professor of the class, and he 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 just got a job at a high school, and he said, "Hey, I, I need two coaches." And me and my buddy he was like, "Hey, we'll coach." So I took a job as an eighteen year old kid coaching a uh, freshman basketball. That was kind of my first coaching job, and that's kind of how I got into coaching. That's crazy, man. So you yeah. so you learned to coach under Jerry Tarkanian. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. that oh, you know, yeah. I saw Nishan, who's who's running the Instagram live right now, kind of pump his fist. I mean, anyone that grew up watching basketball in the 80s and 90s knows Jerry Tarkanian. Oh, yeah. I used to run the Amoeba defense for a while because I learned it from uh, Jerry Tarkanian's assistant. So I was like kind of my staple defense in high school when I was coaching like at lower levels. We'd always run the Amoeba, and it would confuse the heck out of lower-level teams. So um, that's kind of the what I used to run. And I learned it from Tarkanian's assistant who learned it from Tarkanian. So. There you go. <laughs> who better to learn from? Yeah. So your first experience coaching was at the high school freshman level? High school freshman level. Uh, we were uh, uh, 12 and – 12 and 9 are for my first year. So it was a winning season. So, And how old were you when you got that job? 18. 18, 18 years old. 18 years old, coaching 18. the freshman. So these are kids that are, what, maybe four years younger than you at yep. the time. Yep. Now, what's the learning curve for you as a coach? Are you teaching fundamentals? Are you looking at what kind of offense and defense am I running? I mean, what's the focus for you at that level? So the lower levels, you just want to teach fundamentals. So you just want to teach them the basic, you know, basic basketball. Like I tell the guys – Corny basketball wins basketball, so the jump stops, the two-hand passes, the playing the right way, playing off two feet. So at the lower level, you just want to teach guys kind of how to play basketball, not kind of what to do, just kind of how to play the basketball game the right way. And that's kind of what I was uh, teaching at the lower levels. Okay. Now, as you're, as you're coaching and you're going to Fresno State, what's your major? What are you looking to do after you get out of college? Was coaching the goal? No. So when I was in college, my whole goal was to go into medical field. My sister's a nurse, um, so I wanted to go into medical field. 
I went to school with aspirations of being a physician assistant. So my degree was in health science. Uh, when I graduated college, I was a EMT for about two years in LA and it just burnt me out. And I was like, oh, this, this isn't for me, man. It's just the sadness of seeing all that, all that every day. Uh, so I got burnt out in the medical field. And that's how I kind of said, you know what? I got to find something that that's more, more passionate about. Uh, I know I like working with kids. Uh, I knew I coached before, so I, I start coaching. But with coaching, obviously, you can't have a, a living on coaching. So I, I decided, how can I make money and still work with kids? And that's how I got in the teaching profession. Okay. Now, now uh, I have down that you teach special ed. Correct. How did you get into that? Oh, so my wife, uh, my wife of now woo, ten years, uh, her son, my stepson, is autistic. So um, I, that's how I kind of got into special ed, just kind of talking to her, going to IEP meetings, just kind of working with them, going to, you know, uh, special ed events, just kind of dealing with people. And I know that I, I like working with special ed students. I like, I like the families, like trying to help them to kind of, you know, have them uh, have a normal lifestyle. So that's kind of how I got into the, to the special ed. Now, now, teaching special ed, I have to imagine, takes a lot of patience <laughs> and... and, and I, I, I don't know how else to say it. Like, it sounds like you must be a very good person. Uh, what do you take from teaching and from teaching special ed in particular that you can bring into your coaching? So like you said, teaching special ed takes a lot of patience because sometimes you just kind of sit there and just, it just, it takes, it takes patience. So same thing with coaching. You just, when a kid's not doing what you ask him to do is, is the hardest thing of coaching. So that's kind of where the patience come to play. We'd say, Hey, when you tell the kid to run this way, but for whatever reason in his brain, he doesn't want to run that way. You just got to have patience and just kind of figure out why aren't you running that way? Is it because it's whatever, so you got to figure it out. So like I said, special ed does help me with the coaching aspect, does help me get patience uh, so I don't get any technical fouls. So kind of, <laughs> so it does help me kind of be, be patient. Now on the flip side of that, is there anything that you take from your coaching that then you then bring to your teaching? Uh, coaching and, and coaching and teachings, they're all, they're all the same. Cause when you're coaching, you're still teaching. I mean, when you're teaching, you're still coaching. It, it's kind of goes hand in hand. So you're still working with the young man. You still want them to, to do well in school. You want them to do all well off the court. So coaching and teaching goes hand to hand. I take the same aspects of working hard, uh, whether it's on the court, whether it's in the classroom, kind of same exact thing. So, uh, it, it goes hand in hand. Now, now as you're starting to break into teaching, and then you're coaching. Where is the progression there of you started out at 18 coaching freshmen? What was next in your coaching career? Uh, so I started out 18 coaching freshmen. Once I left Fresno, I got into the, uh, like I said, I became an EMT. So I had to start, step away from coaching because it was, it was so much uh, work and so much time consuming. Uh, I didn't get back into coaching until I want to say 2006 um, when I had met the current or well, the my former mentor or teacher Ray Walker, uh, I had I knew I wanted to get back into coaching, and I saw a posting on CIF that said, "Hey, looking for a lower level coach at Bellflower High School." So I emailed. He said, "Hey, come down. Let's uh, let's meet. Let's talk." And funny story, when I met him down there, uh, OJ Mayo was playing in like some summer league event down at our uh, Bellflower High School. So uh, we sat, we talked. Me and Coach Walker, he kind of just talking about the X's and O's, kind of what I want to do with coaching. And that's how I got back into coaching. And I coached with him maybe for a couple years at Bellflower. Uh, and then I actually stepped away from coaching uh, because I went to get my special ed credential. And while I did that, I started actually refereeing basketball. So I actually kind of referee on the side uh, here and there as well as uh, coaching basketball too. So <laughs> Now, and now as, and I, I got to imagine a lot of coaches don't have that experience refing as a ref. What is it like, especially when coaches and parents start getting hot? You know what I mean? So, so as a ref, I kind of, you know, I kind of, cons- I kind of understand what the coaches are going through. Um, so I try to call the calls that the, that the coaches want, um, but still kind of keep the flow of the game. Um, and like I tell my guys too, like it's, it's rare. It's a rarity that you have a coach that's actually played basketball, that's ref basketball and coach basketball. So I can kind of give you guys all the little ins and outs of it. So we kind of give you guys a cheat code of basketball if you guys just kind of follow along. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, I was just going to bring that up. I mean, you have the experience as a player and now you have the experience as a ref. What did the experience as a ref now as a coach, is there anything that you see differently or is there any way that you know how to approach the refs that maybe other guys who don't have that refereeing experience? Oh, 100%. I kind of know what the refs are looking at. Um, so I don't tell my guys what they can kind of get away with, but I kind of tell them, hey, you know, if the ref makes a call, it's because he's seen you do this. But, you know, um, as, and as a, as a coach, when I'm coaching and not refing, I just want to tell the ref, just call the obvious. So I try not to show up my refs because we're in the same unit. Uh, I ref in the Long Beach unit. I, you know, obviously I don't ref any boys' games because I don't want any conflict of interest. So I do only uh, girls' varsity, maybe some boys' JV games. 
uh, just for the conflict of interest. But it's the same thing. Basketball is basketball. Uh, so I tell my guys, hey, you know, when you're doing this, the ref is looking for this. So don't do that because he's looking for that play. So don't, you know, don't put your forearm in the kid's back. Don't get your hands off of them because we're looking for hand checks. We're looking for travels. I tell them the new points of emphasis. Uh, every year we got points of emphasis as a ref. So I kind of give the guys a heads up what, what the look refs are looking for. Now, and in being a ref yourself, does that change in a bit, a bit in a way the way you talk to the refs in your own games? Because I know for me, when I was young, watching my dad coach, and my mom's got tons of stories watching my dad's coach, he was not kind to the referees. Yeah, no, no, I'm not kind to the refs. When I'm, when I'm, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm coaching, man, I'm coaching, man. I, I forget that the refs are my buddies, my friends. So I always apologize to them after the game, but it's been some times where, where Coach Aggies told me to calm down because you know, I get on them because, you know, as a ref, like, we got a, we got a standard we got to hold to. So I know when I ref, I don't try to miss it. So I, I don't want them to miss it. So I get on them tough, and, and they know it's tough love. And I, like I said, I always apologize after the after the game and just say, "Hey, I was just coaching today, so I'll see you tomorrow whenever we, whenever we're partners." But today, today's I'm coaching, so they know I'm always fighting for the kids. They, they know it's never personal. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Now, now, as you're going through your progression as a teacher and as a coach, uh, how do you end up at Artesia? So I ended up at Artesia High School um, because Ray Walker, again, back to Ray Walker, he was at Artesia High School, and I was working at a middle school. Um, I was teaching at a middle school down in Long Beach, and he knew that I was I was always trying to get out of middle school just because middle school, it takes a special person to work in middle school, and there's just, just different kids. I loved it. I loved my two years at Long Beach. Uh, but he knew that I was always trying to get into high school, and then um, he tell, he let me know. He said, hey, coach, you know, Artesia has a, a special ed job opening. Would you be interested in, in coming over? And I was like, yeah, can you, can you help me get in? He's like, yeah, I'll help you out. He's like, but if you come over, you got to coach the, the lower level teams for me. I was like, oh, I was like, all right, coach. So that was my first year. I went over there and I did uh, boys JV first year. And like I said, my second year, we worked together. My third year, I was by myself, COVID year. And this year is my fourth year coming up uh, as coaching. So now, now it sounds like up to this point, you've been coaching lower level freshman JV. You make the move as a co-head coach at the varsity level three years ago, and then two years ago was your first year solo head coach of the varsity. What was the jump that you saw maybe in coaching, maybe in competition, in the way that you have to teach going from the lower levels into the varsity now? So the biggest jump in lower levels is, is a time commitment. So if you're getting to coaching, especially the varsity level, it's a time commitment. So if you have a, a significant other, you got to make sure that they're, that they're willing. And my wife, she, she's 100%. She, she's always at the games. She works at doors, but the coaching varsity at the, the varsity level, uh, you have to scout, you have to watch film every night, especially in tournaments where, say, you play a 7.30 game on a, on a Wednesday, and then the next day, Thursday, you're playing at 4 o'clock, so I got to go home. I get home probably like 10, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, whatever, after I shower and eat. Now I got to watch film of my opponent the next day, so I'm not going to bed till you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, then got to get up and go to work at 6 o'clock in the morning. So coaching is a grind, but it's a grind that, that I love and I signed up for, with the lower levels, you just coach your game, you go home, you don't worry about scouting, you play the next opponent the next day, and you just kind of figure it out on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the time commitment, that, yep. sounds, that sounds huge. Now, in terms of practices, say, I mean, is it still, even at the varsity level, is it mainly on the fundamentals, or are there things that you're also looking at in terms of varsity, which in high school, I mean, that's the highest level of competitive play there is. Correct. Yeah, you're always teaching fundamentals because, I mean, kids, uh, well, especially nowadays with basketball, a lot of kids are playing uh, in the summer and they're playing, you know, organ AAU basketball, they're playing with their clubs. And a lot of times when they go to their clubs, club basketball is great. I also coach club basketball in the summers, but sometimes they get their club with their clubs, they kind of get away from kind of what we teach them during the regular season. Um, so kind of sometimes when they come back to you in the regular season, you got to go over those fundamentals again of jump stopping, uh, making a strong pass, playing the right way, uh, defensive slide. So um, it's always fundamentals. So every every day in my practice, we always do the first thing we do in the warm ups is, is a breakdown drill. We close out, break down uh, defensive slides, box out, rebound. So it's, it's always fundamentals, no matter if you're teaching freshman, JV, varsity. Uh, if you don't, if you don't have fundamentals, then then you're not going to win. Uh, the thing with the varsity level is when you have the the high level players who are fundamentally and they're talented. That's when you got a scary a scary combination right there. Now, now with coaching at the varsity level as well. I mean, what is the competition like for Artesia right now in your league? So our league this year is a six hundred five league. It's the third year in existence. Um, we have a couple good teams in our league. Our league's kind of not the strongest of leagues, um, but this is why this year we we scheduled tough this year. Um, 
Right now we are in uh, Division 4A for the CIA playoffs, but we scheduled Division 2A teams, Division 3A teams, Division 2 teams. So I scheduled, up per- I scheduled tough perf- purposely just to kind of get us ready for the season. So like I said, we're playing Santa Monica. Uh, we're playing Eisenhower. We are playing uh, in the St. John Bosco's uh, Martin Luther King Day Showcase game. Uh, we are playing the Max Preps, uh, Torrey Pines, San Diego tournament. So I, I schedule, I try to schedule tough as tough as possible to kind of get them ready for the regular season because our league isn't the strongest. But still, in the league, you never know, man, because teams always want to beat you. Like I said, it's always everybody championship game. So if you sleep on teams in the league because you think they're not as strong, that's when you kind of you know have a hiccup and lose a game that you're not supposed to lose. Now, now, when you talk about hiccups, too, I imagine that, especially at the high school level, one of the biggest things that you're working on is probably the mental focus and, and getting people to do their jobs. And you kind of mentioned it with, like, AAU and getting away from the fundamentals. What is it about coaching, at, at, you know, adolescent boys? How do you get their minds right? How do you keep them focused? How do you keep them kind of doing their job on the team? Man, so that's like the the magic sauce, right? There. If, you have, if you have the question, if you have the answer to that question, please let me know, because <laughs> <laughs> especially nowadays, Excuse me, excuse me, especially nowadays, uh, for whatever reason, I think maybe it's a season, but it seems like everybody on our team has a girlfriend now. <laughs> <laughs> so we, <laughs> we have 12 guys on the team, I swear, man, probably like seven of them have girlfriends. So, and uh, hopefully that, that doesn't, but you got you to gotta deal with the girlfriends now. These got to deal with social media. Um, we got great coaches on the staff who kind of just talk to them, kind of keep motivated and tell them that, let them know that, hey, once you're here, it's basketball. It's basketball for two and a half hours, three hours. Just focus on basketball. Focus on the goals that we have on, on hand. And when that's over, then you can go home and deal with the family, deal with the girlfriend, deal with social media. But when you're here, just focus on basketball. So we got we preach that every day, every practice, every time we see them. It's basketball. It's basketball. You'll have time for the girls. you have time for the whatever, the social media. You'll have time for the video games. Right now, all we ask is for two hours of your dedication. And we get that for the most part. But then you get kids that have lapses every now and then just because, you know, they're kids. They're 15, 16 year old kid. So you'll have a time where practice will joke around and obviously you make a run, but you just try to have less lapses in practice. Yeah. And you know, you brought it up and I I haven't been in high school. I graduated in 2005. (laughs) I haven't been in high school. I haven't been around school in a super long time. I didn't have social media when I was in high school. I can't imagine what with this, even my cell phone, I look at what I have now and kids have now. I had a Nokia phone with an antenna and I had prepaid minutes. It was only for calling my parents. Now Everybody's got a smartphone and everybody's got social media, even as, as a coach and as a teacher. I mean, what is the distraction like that, that these kids are facing now? Man, 100%. When I was in high school, I used to, like, slip notes to my girlfriends in her locker. I used to write notes down. But nowadays, man, it's, it's social media there, social media that. Um, so we just tell them put their phones away. It's hard because you can't, you can't police a kid. And, like, um, it's hard, man. We just, just tell them, like I said, no phones in practice. Uh, every time we're in the weight room, no phones in the weight room. Uh, no phones on the track, so we just try to limit them as, as much as possible. But but you're not with them 24-7, so we just try to t- uh, preach them to do the right thing so we're not with them, and they don't get in trouble on social media because we tell them nowadays everybody's watching. So you can post something, and somebody's going to screenshot it, somebody's going to grab it, and it's going to be there forever. So and now you're a representation of our teachers, so you're not a re- only representation of yourself. You're a representation of your family, you're a representation of the school, you're a representation of myself. So anything you guys do – got to make sure to do it the right way. Otherwise, you know, one little thing, one little tweet, one little Instagram post that we're all in trouble now. Yeah. And, and I feel like there's a new wrinkle now with the new NILs. Uh, I've seen, you know, Mikey Williams down in San Diego has signed a Puma deal. I mean, it, do you have an issue with keeping your kids' heads on straight with, in terms of that, in terms of using social media as a PR device or in terms of these NIL deals and any kind of exposure that they're trying to get? So thankfully we're not we're not there yet. <laughs> we don't have the the NIL deals yet. Uh, hopefully, you know, once our a couple of our kids develop, we may get that yet. Um, but we still have kids, man, who has over you know a couple thousand followers on Instagram, more than more than we have on our, our own sports account or on our teacher account. But so those kids have their own followers, and they're always trying to do things for for the Instagram or TikTok, and trying to get you know TikTok famous or Instagram famous. Uh, so we still tell them you know be mindful of what they post and things like that. But um, so we still have the we still have the distractions of them want to making a video, want to hey videotape me dunking or whatever for so I can put on my Instagram or do this, do that. You know what I'm saying? Instead of you know focusing on what they're supposed to be doing. So like pre practice, we always tell them pre practice you always got maybe 10, 15 minutes before practice working your game, not you know uh, have your phone, not having somebody trying to film you dunking or whatnot. So you know use that to work on your free throws, working your game. Yeah. Now, now, now on this show, I've had a, a number of coaches on, and a lot of them are private school coaches, Harvard Westlake, Marymount High School, uh, Survey. Schools like that are great, and they have great facilities. They have a lot of resources. 
how do public schools compete in that environment when you are going up against schools that have maybe a lot more resources and a lot more facilities and a lot more coaches and all, and all that at their exposure? How do you compete as, as a public school? So that's always hard, man. Like, uh, especially when you get the CIFs because you have the public schools and private schools all in the same division, all in the same league. Um, so you just compete by just, I don't know, man. <laughs> how would you compete, Aggie? I would have to ask Aggie, how do you compete? For me, man, I just tell my guys, as long as we play hard, honestly, I don't care who we play, man. As long as we play hard, uh, we, should, we should be competitive and be live with the outcome. But actually, Artesia, some, some public schools have really, really great facilities. Let me not say that because, like I said, I referee. I've been to a lot of public schools in the area, and some have some really great facilities. We have great facilities at Artesia. We have two 90-foot nba size court. There's not many around in the area. We have great locker rooms, uh, great weight rooms. We just got a brand-new football field. So there's, there's a lot of public schools out there with really great facilities. So um, it's kind of a, a misconception. Obviously, the private schools, the, the Catholic schools, they have, they have you know uh, a lot more than we have. But there's a lot of public schools out there with great facilities. So, you just, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of them out there. That's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that. Now, as a coach, outside of the game of basketball, what are you hoping to teach your players that is applicable not just on the court? You know what I mean? So, like I say, you're always coaching, so you just want to teach your kids to, uh, to do the things the right way, hard work, dedication. Uh, let them know that even after basketball is over, even if you don't go play basketball at the next level, you're still going to have to get up and go to work and have the family eventually. So uh, sports teach you that because, like I told them the other day, it's hard to play high school sports, man. It's hard to play. It's hard to be a student athlete. Those guys got, you know, homeworks. They got practice. They got weight rooms. Then they got to go home and, and still still do their homework. Still got to get good grades. Still got to go home and study. Uh, now, like I said, they got girlfriends. They got family problems. Uh, nowadays, man, uh, like you said, I, I graduated. Well, I'm not going to say I graduated. I graduated a long time <laughs> ago. But I don't have to deal with some of the family problems that some of these kids have to deal with, man. If I, I couldn't tell you the stories that they got to deal with, but it's just, it's, just, it's just sad, man. Like Some of these kids got the weight of the world on their shoulders, and still to come to school every day and grind and work and get good grades, it's a talent, man. Like, it's hard work. So that's actually preparing them for life. So they don't know that yet, but this is what they're doing now is we'll prepare them for life. A lot of kids on our team, we have great grades. I think our, I think our team average right now is probably like a 3.1 GPA. We got guys taking honors classes. We got guys, you know, uh, in, in different clubs outside of basketball. So it, it, they're just preparing them. They're setting, they're help setting themselves up for life. That's good. That's that's a good lesson to learn. Now, for those kids that, that, as you said, have the weight of the world on their shoulders, what do you think the value of playing competitive sports or high school sports is for them? So it's great because I tell them every time they come here, this is kind of their time to kind of let everything go and focus and have fun and be a kid. Because I know sometimes when they go home, they may have to help their moms out, their dads out. They may have to take care of their little brothers and sisters. But when they get here at the school and they get a chance to play, just have fun, man. Let it go and let, let the weight of the world go. And then when you go home after the game, then you can deal with that stuff and and but when you're here, enjoy it, enjoy the moment. Just remember, it's a game, uh, and just, just just enjoy it. Awesome, awesome. Now, as we wind down, there's a question that I like to ask everybody that comes on this show, uh, which is, what has sports done for you in your life, and what does sports mean to you? Uh, sports is everything, man. Without sports, I don't think I'd be here where where I'm at today. Uh, I played, like I said, I played basketball. I ran track. I tried out for football when I was in high school, and I got hit once. And <laughs> I said, Nah, this, this ain't the sport for me, man. So basketball. Uh, but it taught me. It taught me to be uh, hardworking. Uh, it taught me to stay, stick with it. Same things like I'm teaching them. Uh, never quit. Never give up. Uh, get up. Go to work early. Go to practice early. Uh, dedication. Those sports. Sports, America, sports, youth sports are great. So I'm glad we actually get a chance to play this year, uh, even with COVID, uh, even with uh, the, the the mask mandate, uh, LA mandate. We have to wear masks this season during the during the court, but at least we get a chance to play. And I told those kids enjoy it because it can be gone in the moment, like it was, like it almost was last year. Yeah. Well, Coach Jeff Miles, thank you so much for coming on the show. Good luck with your upcoming season. The season kicks off when for you guys? So our first game is November 15th. Uh, we start out against Legacy Char Legacy College Prep. Again, I'm sure that it's going to be a championship game for us. And then we, we, we play Friday, play Saturday, play Saturday in the St. Bonaventure Showcase against Eisenhower, which is going to be a great team. Uh, it's going to be a, probably one of our toughest tests of the season, but I think our guys are ready. Uh, we've been working hard all summer. We've working hard all fall. Uh, we've been grinding, man, but I think we're ready, man. We're ready to compete. So our, our biggest goal this year, our biggest motto is always compete, always compete. So uh, if you want to follow us, you can follow us on our on Instagram at Artesia Hoops, uh, at Twitter Artesia, Ho Artesia Hoops. Uh, thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for coming on. Uh, Thank you so much it, for coming on, man. Good luck with the season. It sounds like you guys are ready to go, and I'm glad you guys get to play this year. Yeah, we're just trying to bring the Artesia back of the old, man. We're just trying to bring back the Artesia. Oh, can I mention that also uh, – 
So this year, uh, we are full sponsored by Adidas. Adidas, and thank you, James Harden, if you're out there listening somewhere. Um, so so we're full sponsored by Adidas and James Harden. So our guys get everything, boys and girls, uh, from shoes to to everything, man. So it's it's a blessing. And, again, I told the guys today, man, with, with, the, with, the, with the pub, it's going to come more targets. So you got to be ready. So our guys are ready to play. Awesome. Well, yeah. And thank you to James Harden. Thank you to Coach Miles for coming by. Thank you to you guys who are watching on YouTube, who are listening on the call and app, who are listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever else you get your podcasts from. If you guys want to check us out, we are on Instagram at Canon Sports. We're on TikTok at Canon Sports Official. And of course, CanonSports.com for all of your sporting goods needs. Thank you guys. And we will see you next time.